Okay, my vlog guys, we've been talking about mostly provincial life um, with our build and such. And, but let's talk about what you can do with 2 million pesos uh, in Cebu City to get you started. Let's have a look here. Guys, I've mentioned this before, but this complex here is a deca home. It's, it's, these buildings are what they call tip up. So they, they uh, concreted all of the, the frames for the side and then just tipped it up, put a floor in and really, really basic, basic stuff. Anyway, what can you do here for 2 million pesos to get yourself started in the Philippines? Well, this unit here is, is pretty typical of some units that are available here. Now this one here, I'll just get the sign in there first guys. Uh, it's 2.4, but you can get this for 2 million, maybe even a little bit less. Um, uh, just slowly back out. And, you know, pretty basic unit here, kind of sandwiched in between two buildings. Okay. But I know that this one was upgraded for about 700,000. And so obviously very modern looking, you know, put the pot lights underneath in the garage, nice door on it, the whole thing. But if you bought this and simply put in a structural floor in case you wanted to put a second story in, you could have your carport there and you'd be ready to go. So, you know, some of these units in here are quite nice. Now, again, you know, here we've got a unit with quite a nice car in there. This one here, the gate's all done up nice. You got flowers hanging and everything in there. Uh, you know, flowers out on the road and everything. Now this one next door to uh, Wilbert's unit is uh, they've upgraded a little bit heavier um, and they're, they put a little bit more into it. But this one also told us about 700,000 uh, to get this upgraded. Now, I cannot tell you in this particular case whether uh, they had the second floor on it already or not, okay? Um, you know, but they've got, you know, a glass balcony um, and then a split air con has been put in there and again, stainless down below. Or, you know, if it's more to your liking, you know, again, two stories here, uh, nice little jungle thing, right? Not too bad at all. But I think the main point here is that there is opportunity here, guys. And if you're, if the province life is not what you're into, then, you know, there's complexes like this that you may look at it and say, wow, that's pretty downtrodden. But you know what? If you're looking for um, a little bit more exclusive, a gated community that is, um, you know, wider roads than this, all of that type of thing, you know, you're, you're talking really, really close to Western money. You know, probably not, you know, London or, or you know, Berlin or New York or whatever. Not those kind of costs. But, you know, your standard uh, city, you know, uh, less than Victoria, you know, a smaller place like that. Uh, you can, you, you know, you're going to pay very similar money here. Okay. And the kicker is the thing that you have to get ready for is even the very exclusive places. As soon as you drive out of them, the roads often can get thinner than this. And you don't know what's going to be built down there in the future. You haven't got a clue. So some of these more established places, uh, you know, spend some time and just walk around and get a little bit of language. All you have to learn is Mayon Gabi'i when the sun has already gone down, Mayon Hapon for afternoon, and Mayon Buntag for morning. And, uh, you know, just that now that's Bisaya, of course, it's the Cebu region. Uh, but you know what? You can get yourself started and people will smile and all that sort of thing. And, you know, don't be afraid of looking at the more established communities. Not as downtrodden as what you might think. Now, the other unit that we went and looked at uh, yesterday, I think it was, um, more of a newer deco home. But it's crazy, man. I mean, it's a million pesos for a... 30 square meter townhouse. Three units up, rack them, stack them, pack them. 
full of brand new vehicles. I mean, the Fortuners in there and, uh, you know, similar type vehicles all over the place. I mean, those, some of those vehicles are more than the unit themselves, but noisy. Oh, and that's because the middle income of the Philippines, that's what they're doing. They're not staying with the parents anymore. They're, you know, they're getting out on their own. And that's the way it is all happening here now. A far cry difference from when I first got here. Though it was, it was starting. There was, you know, obvious signs of that kind of thing starting now that I look back. Now, I look back on this with kind of a, you know, an old slideshow uh, presentation in my head here. Because, you know, Lynn and I were only coming here for, you know, when we would fly here for six months, we might have spent three weeks in Cebu. Uh, and so, you know, a lot of it was like, chuk, chuk, oh, look, that high rise is almost complete, you know, or, chuk, chuk, oh, there's the high rise starting. Chuk, chuk, oh, there it is almost ready. Chuk, chuk, oh, there it is. Everybody's occupied. Wow. Look, there's three more buildings going in. And so, you know, we see the massive change to Cebu. It's a lot more metropolitan than we give it credit for. And I would say, in many cases, it's more like Bangkok was 10 years ago, uh, really getting there. Um, but if I were to pick a bigger city uh, and not want to get near Manila, then Cebu is sure a city that I would look for. But this is what you can do with about 2 million pesos to get yourself started, guys. So, you know, uh, but as I always say, don't move too fast. Don't just sell everything lock, stock and barrel and think that you're going to make it here. You got to know that you can make it here before you pull the trigger. Culturally, it's a big shift. And, you know, if you be here long enough, um, you run into all sorts of characters. And some of those characters, yeah, they moved uh, to where their girlfriend was living or their wife is living. And they hacked it for about three or four years. And then, then that was it, you know, and then they either headed off to their native country or off to a different region. Uh, it's a different life, guys, a completely different life. I think most Westerners could merge into Europe from North America or vice versa a lot easier than what you can do with Southeast Asia. Population density just makes that statement pretty straightforward. Okay, later Gators.